So you're looking to get into the church music scene or you've been in it for a while and you want to know the best ways to move up and grow. Well, there are five trade secrets that I've learned in my 30 plus years of being a church musician that's like magic for church musicians growth. And if you don't learn them, you will remain stuck and stagnant for sure. And I'm revealing them to you in this video. So your growth as a church musician goes far beyond your musical skills and musical ability because it's really more about facilitating and enhancing the experience for the audience. And although that's pretty much the same for any other type of audience that you would play for, it goes a little bit deeper than just pure entertainment. It's about being a bridge between an individual and their spiritual experience. It's about being the Uber or Lyft that takes them from where they are to where they wanna be. And being able to do that, and especially being able to do it well, requires a lot more than just being able to play an instrument well. And it's ultimately the thing that's gonna get you the tours with artists and you know playing at major church events and get you at that higher pay scale and you know a higher level of respect. Now, I'm going to tell you the five major trade secrets that's going to get you to that point really quickly. But let me just first say that I already know that when people hear stuff like musicians talking about pay and respect and all of that, they get their draws in a bunch and start talking about, well, if musicians are concerned about that kind of stuff, they're in it for the wrong reasons and all of that mess. And it's funny because they always assume that it's about some sort of self glorification or something. But when I'm talking about growth and all of that, I'm talking about the kind that's going to help you become a greater and bigger service to other people. And I would submit to you that the more of these things you have, like the more growth and respect and more money and stuff that you have within reason, of course, because it can get excessive, the better equipped you are to be of service to other people and do good in the world. And it's really more about the way you use that money and growth and respect than it is about just having it or, you know, earning it. And the really great part about these five trade secrets I'm about to share with you is they're not just going to help you as a musician, they're really going to help you in life. And that's what makes them so valuable. Now, this first one is huge. And it's something that I see a lot of musicians deal with. And it's something that I struggled with early on in my career. See, I know exactly what it's like to just put your head down and try to remain humble and put your needs aside and just be grateful and thankful and all of that. I also know how uncomfortable it is to ask for things you need like money and raises and stuff like that because it just feels like you should be a servant and all of that and you're just asking for too much and then you got other people saying that you shouldn't be paid and you should just be thankful for what you have and all of that but a lot of musicians get looked over and passed over for stuff because they have this attitude a saying that my mom used to always say to me is a closed mouth don't get fed and i have a saying that says you don't get what you deserve you get what you ask for and what these sayings mean is that you have to be able to open up and stand up and speak up for yourself and this doesn't just include things like money it also includes respect you cannot let people run over you you can't let them talk to you any kind of way and you absolutely can't let them talk about you to other people particularly negatively without you saying something about it and speaking up for yourself and the reason for this is because sometimes respect has to be demanded and command it from people and it's those that have that level of respect particularly a high level of respect is those that tend to grow and move up and gain these things that we want as church musicians so the tip here is that you have to be able to stand up for yourself ask for and or demand the things that you want or need now this next one is really powerful and i'll explain it like this you know how there's this one guy, this one church musician in every city, and you probably know who it is in your city, that is just like really well connected and knows everybody? Like he's the person to call if you're looking for a church to play for or whatever or a service to play for. He kind of knows about it and can, you know, put you in touch with somebody, right? And he's probably very well paid and in high demand. All of the local church leaders and pastors and all of that call this dude 
when they need something musically because either he can do it, they want him to do it, or he's going to put them in touch with someone who can do it, right? And I'm saying dude, but of course it could be a woman too. But the point is, this person never really has to worry about being paid fairly or being looked over or passed over like a lot of other musicians are, or even being respected. And you want to become not just like this dude necessarily, but very similar to him. And the way that you do this is you shake hands, you meet and greet, you exchange contact information with every single church leader, church pastor, even Dinkin that you meet or come across. And what's gonna happen is over time, you're gonna build a super solid circle of people in leadership areas that's gonna support you and your growth and it's gonna push forward for you. Now, right before we get to the next tip, if you're getting value out of this video, or if you've gotten value out of any of my videos on this channel, I need a small favor from you. I am on a mission to grow this channel to 100,000 subscribers this year and make this channel the most valuable channel on the internet for musicians just like you. And it would really help if you would go and subscribe to the channel right now, and I would really appreciate it. Now, this next one is really gonna help you. And let me give you a story about what happened to me during the pandemic to illustrate this for you. So back in like late January, early February of 2020, there was talks of the virus spreading and all of that, but the biggest thing was that we were gonna have to go into shutdown. And when the news started talking about that, I immediately thought like, wow, what are churches gonna do? And I said at that very moment that I bet that if this happens, online church is gonna become huge. And if that happens, people with audio, video, camera, tech skills, and all of that are going to immediately become immensely valuable, particularly to churches that have never done like live streaming and have that kind of tech. Now, guess who had already had a lot of experience with audio and tech and cameras and live streaming and YouTubing and all of that? Me. So I was able to use those skills to help keep the churches I play for afloat, along with many other churches that reached out to me to help them set up cameras and their live streaming and all of that kind of stuff. And they paid me really well. Now, this in no way makes me special or anything because I know many other people that did the exact same thing. But it illustrates a really big trade secret that I learned years ago that was really just reinforced by this pandemic situation that you really have to get. And it's this. If you want to grow in your journey as a church musician at like lightning speed, you need to diversify your skills and you need to learn to identify problems when they arise and provide solutions to them. In business, there's a saying that the most valuable person in the room is the person that is good at solving other people's problems and making their lives easier. And even if you did this one simple tip alone, you would experience major growth overall as a church musician. Now, one of the things that we used to do back in the day of cassette tapes and CDs as church musicians is that we would be the first to run to the music store to buy new music when it came out. And this was for a few reasons. One, because it was just always a thing and it was cool to brag about having the latest CD by the most popular gospel artists and all of that kind of stuff. It'd be like, oh, you ain't got that joint yet? But the other reason is because we understood that once that album got out and everybody got it and the radio started playing and all of that, there were going to be at least two or three songs on there that was going to be bangers and every church choir and praise team in the city and the nation was going to be doing those two to three songs. So we would get the albums as soon as we could and learn all of the songs on there so we would be ready. Because when you got that call to come play somewhere, the more you were able to say, yeah, I know those songs or I know that song, the more likely you were to get chosen to play for everything. But this taught me a really important lesson that's extremely valuable and still applies to this very day. And that is that growth and being chosen and all of that kind of stuff was really about trust. See, because people understood and believed that I could be trusted to play for things and lead music departments and all of that simply for the dedication that I put into my craft and learning music and all of that. And they knew that they could feel confident that if they called a song out to me on the spot, that I would probably know it because I was just on music like that. So the tip here is that to grow, 
and become really highly requested and respected, you need to develop a really diverse musical repertoire as a church musician. And here's why. It's great to be able to speak English really well and be a master of it. But in a room full of people who speak English and Spanish, the most valuable person in that room is the person who can speak a little bit of both. Now, this next tip is the simplest one of them all, but it might just be the most powerful too. So something that happened to me some years ago is that I got a call about a really well-known major gospel artist that was looking for a musician to go on tour with him. So I submitted for it and I was one of only a few people that got the call to come in and meet with him and audition for him. It went really well and he and his team liked me very much and they offered me the job on the spot. But the problem was I was playing for two churches at that time and for me to be able to leave and go on tour with this gospel artist, I was gonna have to quit my job at both those churches. And admittedly, it was pretty tempting because you know, the clout thing was in my mind. Like I could say that I had toured and played for this major gospel artist and all of that. And it paid me more than what I was making at both of those churches combined. But despite the pressure they were putting on me and a lot of my friends were putting on me too to take that tour and that job, I ultimately turned it down because I just didn't feel it was right for me. And oh my God, I am so glad to this day that I turned it down because I heard that about six months later or so, this artist fired his entire band. So yeah, I would have been up the creek without a paddle. But what this made me realize is that there is a huge lack of integrity and responsibility and dedication and commitment among church musicians. A lot of them do this thing, which we used to call church hopping, where they will just go to the next church and play and take jobs at the next church that's offering them a little bit more money or that's giving them a little bit more status and they can brag about and have clout about and all of that. And again, I totally get it because to be honest, I've been really tempted by it a few times myself. But the fact of the matter is this, trees, like really large, huge trees that you look up at in awe, they don't grow to be that way by being plucked up and placed in different soil and different ground every six months or every year. They grow to that huge, massive state when they sit in one place for an extended period of time and they get a lot of water and a lot of sunlight. Now, I mentioned standing up for yourself earlier, and there's one thing in particular that's happening that church pastors are doing to musicians that you absolutely need to stand up for yourself on. And I talk about it in this video right here. So head over and check it out so you'll be prepared for it if it ever happens to you. 